Hey folks, thanks for joining us. Two Indy Travelers, and we are in the heartland, the heartland of Indiana, at the cross section of the crossroads of Indiana. Main Street, USA. Folks, we're at the corner of State Road 9 here in Indiana and historic Route 40. Route 40 actually has been around and outdates Route 66. We're going to tell you a little bit more about it. So folks, buckle up and buckle in. And let the fun begin. Let's get to it. Let's go. Come on. Route 40 has a lot of history. In fact, Route 40 was one of the first federally funded highway roads in the United States. George Washington and Thomas Jefferson felt this road was needed to unify the young country. In 1806, Congress authorized construction of the road. Fast forward to 1926, the U.S. introduced a number system to the roads, making it easier to map and identify locations. Those roads with even numbers ran east to west, and those with odd numbers ran north and south. Route 40 predates Route 66 by nearly 100 years. Route 40 once stretched from Atlantic City, New Jersey to San Francisco, California, although today Route 40 ends near Park City, Utah. As we stand in the heartland of the crossroads of Main Street, USA, we can only imagine how things may have been then. Storefronts just like this used to dominate the landscape across every small town from border to border, from coast to coast. But now many of those stores are no longer there. So folks, let's get out and revisit our roots and get into those small towns and show them that uh, we're there to spend a little money and make sure that they survive. It is incredibly important to our culture and history. We gotta preserve these small towns, folks.
Scott, should we follow the yellow brick road? Maybe. What do you think we'll find? <gasps> oh no! They dropped the theater on his sister! Well, that had to hurt, huh? Oh, oh. yeah. Now, many may not even be aware of this, but Greenfield, Indiana is actually the birthplace of one of the most recognized poets of all times, James Whitcomb Riley. In fact, he wrote over a thousand poems. Let's go take a look and visit his childhood home. Greenfield, Indiana, Main Street, USA, is the birthplace of the poet James Wickham Riley, who was also known as the poet of the common people. This is his birthplace home. He was born October 7th, 1849, and passed away in his Indianapolis home in Lockerbie on July 22nd, 1916, at just 66 years old. Now, not everyone is familiar with James Wickham Riley, but they're probably familiar with one of his poems, The Elf Child. <laughs> Still doesn't ring a bell, The Elf Child? Well, what about uh, Little Orphan Annie? Bet that rings a bell, right? Sound familiar? Okay. Well, actually, that poem was the poem that sparked the story, the musical, and the comic of Little Orphan Annie. Also, the most iconic dolls known as the Raggedy Ann doll. So, James Wickham Riley, the poet of the people, and this was his childhood home. And folks, this is that iconic Raggedy Ann doll that we were speaking about. Now, when James Wickham Riley wrote that poem, do you think that he knew that he was going to inspire a musical, a comic, and a doll? Now, this doll actually belongs to Miss Vicky. Vicky, tell us about your Raggedy Ann. <laughs> This iconic doll. I know. This was my doll when I was a child, and she's been with me all these years, put up in a box, but still only fitting to bring her out for what it is that we're talking about today. Uh, we also rewrote some lyrics to the famous song from Annie, The Sun Will Come Up Tomorrow. Because we're only eight subscribers away. Ah. <laughs> we're only eight, eight subscribers, subscribers away. away. But here's what, here's the whole, well, I didn't rewrite the whole song, but just, I, you know, wanted to share. All right, I'm talking this up a little bit too much. We want to go live tomorrow. Take the time to like, subscribe, and follow so we can. And if we go live tomorrow, bet your bottom dollar that tomorrow we'll have fun. Tomorrow, tomorrow, you'll watch us tomorrow. If we can go live, we're only eight subscribers away. Yay, bravo! <laughs> we. Oh man, we're we're okay. goofy as they come. But hey, folks, I yeah. hope you enjoyed that. We just came up with that this morning, okay. as you probably could tell. Yeah. All right. Thanks. Let's continue this voyage. <laughs>
And folks, here we are in front of the historic home of James Whitcomb Riley in the historic Lockerbie area. Uh, in fact, Lockerbie is one of the oldest areas in the Indianapolis um, downtown area. Uh, in fact, most most of the most of the streets here are still cobblestone. They're they preserved, incredible, yeah. Yeah, I mean they preserved all of that, so the streets are still cobblestone or brick or what have you just a real beautiful area beautiful. and again we're just maybe maybe three blocks off of historic route 40. so folks take a look at some of the old state roads and interstate roads that are near your home and i'm guessing that you probably have something really really historic and cool right there in your backyard all you need to do is just kind of look for it a little bit um, she and i have have passed through this area a number of times earlier we were in greenfield indiana which is about i don't know maybe 20 25 to 30 minutes east of downtown indianapolis um, and we showed you his childhood home and again this is where he spent the last 23 years of his life and um, you know he passed away but he made such a contribution with his poetry he did a lot of philanthropy with you know building a, a children's hospital and just doing a lot of things to, to really help the community. Um, but at any rate, I think that's gonna do it for today. But uh, appreciate <laughs> you hanging out with us. Yeah. And so, until next time, <laughs> good day to you. <laughs> <laughs>